Located 1,000 miles off the coast of Florida, Puerto Rico is a lush tropical island paradise and popular tourist haven. With a population of over 3 million people, the island is a contrast between the old and the new, an agricultural economy which also boasts modern cities and a high rate of literacy. In an area about 110 miles long by 40 miles wide, it has modern roads and communications, more than 55 institutions of higher learning, and even the world's largest radio telescope at Arecibo. Hilly and deeply forested, Puerto Rico is considered a place of great natural beauty and serenity. Recently, however, a series of events have occurred which threaten to shatter this image, events which continue to be as bizarre as they are inexplicable. Something has been mutilating the animals on the island in a way that defies the imagination, as well as forensic science. Normally, one would assume that this is the work of some large predator, but that explanation cannot be applied in Puerto Rico. But aside from the relatively tiny mongoose, small lizards and tree frogs, the island has no known predators until now. They call it chupacabra, Spanish for goat sucker, due to the bizarre and frightening method by which it kills its prey. But this label may be too limited, as hundreds of chickens, sheep, cattle, and recently even household pets, like dogs and cats, have been victims of the elusive killer. The boldness of these latest attacks, sometimes occurring in broad daylight, is a chilling new development. No one knows where, when, what, or even who it will attack next. Whatever it is, a bizarre creature with supernatural strength has terrorized this little Caribbean island, and has many fearing for their livestock and even their families. Meanwhile, the death toll keeps rising. The story of Chupacabra may have its roots in the village of Mocha, located on the west end of the island, where in 1975, the first mutilations of this type began to occur. The nature and ferocity of the attacks refer to the name, El Vampira de Mocha, the Vampire of Mocha. When local authorities dynamited an isolated cave, believed to be the creature's lair, the attacks abruptly ended. But around 1990, shortly after Hurricane Hugo devastated an area of the Junke Rainforest, said to be the site of a top secret military laboratory, it is believed that something was unleashed again. The mutilations began to reoccur, first in a limited area around the rainforest, then in an increasingly wider range. Many of the animals initially killed were goats and sheep, whose blood and organ parts were literally sucked out of their bodies through tiny incisions. It was then that the researched creature was given its name, Chupacabra. So for this once tranquil island, often referred to as the Island of Enchantment, the mystery of Chupacabra may have granted it a new name, the Island of Mystery. Bob Schott, investigator of the supernatural and producer-director of Adventures Beyond, journeyed to Puerto Rico to investigate and search out this creature. Coming down the hill. Adventures Beyond journeys into unknown and mysterious areas that are often filled with excitement and suspense. A lot of strange cases, but this ranks right up there with the best of them. We've talked to a lot of local citizens that really feel that they have something to fear, something to fear from a creature, as they say, may not be from this planet.
Ivan Sawyer, reporter for Telemundo in Puerto Rico and one of the island's most prominent news anchors, has been following the story since 1995. She remains totally mystified as to what kind of creature could be responsible and frustrated at the lack of official cooperation to make public the truth. I was first called out on the Chupacabras approximately one year ago. It was some people from the country because they had problems with the animals. They, their animals were appeared, killed in the morning. I, they, they had no idea what had happened to them. The only thing they said to us initially was that they had some profound wounds here that they wouldn't identify with dogs nor anything. Well, something on this island is scaring these people. What do you think they think it is? Well, people think it's chupacabras, but I think nobody knows what it is. And until we take a serious scientific approach to it, we won't know what it is. And this is not the first time it happens in Puerto Rico, because we have had the vampiro de moca and other kind of stories about strange killing of animals. Do you think that these people on this island have a reason to be afraid? I have to be honest, for many months, people were, like I could hear stories of people, I don't let my dog sleep outside of the house, or I don't let my children go to the country during the night. But okay. until they make a real serious and scientific approach to it, and if they find out, they make it publicly, they make it public, or if they don't find out, they say it, we haven't been able to find out. Some public figures are conspicuous by what they don't say or refuse to say, rather than what they do say. Do you think these reports from the people that their animals are being attacked by some strange creature, do you think this is a hoax, or do you believe that uh, they really feel that there's something strange going on? What I can tell you is that we do have dead animals on the island. And I don't want to speculate, because there's too many people on the island, and they have different opinions. But certainly we do have dead animals on the island. When your officers arrive at the scenes and there's dead animals present, what do they do with the carcasses? Well, most of the time we bury them. Sometimes people ask for the Department of Agriculture to make an autopsy. But most of the time we just bury them. The majority of the people just bury them. If someone were to bring you one of these creatures that they captured on their farm to your office and said, here, this is what was mutilating our animals, and the military or the federal government came to you and says, we're taking it from you, Cover this up. It's not for the press. No one's to know about it. Be silent. How would you respond? We work on real cases, not just talk. And if there's a law that says we have to cover up, for that we have a superintendent. And, uh, it would be for him to determine if we should cover up or not. And I repeat, we work on real cases, not just talk. And if the law says we would just be applying the law to it. But another government official has taken a much stronger stance. Now, Jose Soto of Canovinus, better known as Kemo Jones, research and destroy attitude, has adopted an aggressive and determined position regarding the capture and public disclosure of this creature. Why did you go to all of the trouble to organize a search for the Chupacabra? This is a serious case. We're going to try to catch the chupacabras. Because here we have more than 150 dead animals. And actually right now the police aren't doing nothing. We had to do this because we had many animal losses. So we are going to have to capture him no matter what. The people making these reports appear to be honest, hardworking farmers and citizens. What do you think you're dealing with here? 
No, yo, en este momento eh, se sienten asustados porque han visto esta especie. En este momento, la gente está asustada. Tenemos a Madeline Tolentino, que es una muchacha que lo, lo vio bien de cerca. They have seen the figure close up. Tenemos al ministro que lo vio volando. Tenemos We have the minister that saw the animal flying. Negrón, que vio cuando le estaba matando una cabra. We have Negro Tassan, he saw him when he was killing a goat. We have a series of people who have seen him and they have nothing to lie about. They have seen and have reported a four feet figure, like a little man with ears and big reddish eyes. We have 15 people that have given us the same description. And we are dealing with an intelligent being. What do you intend to do about it? We're going to give authority to the press so the people can know what we're doing. We're going to do everything possible to make this public. We want the whole world to see what this is all about. And uh, if we catch the chupacabras and someone wants to take it away from us, they will have to arrest me. They will have to arrest me. I would uh, never let them take it away from me. What do you believe it is? I have my doubts if it's a satanic cult or extraterrestrial cult. But I know that the description that all these people gave us that is not of this earth. They should make some analysis to this cow because I never seen this. I'm 50 years old and I never seen something like this. I never seen anything like this. Upon speaking with the Department of Agriculture, the response was that except for one isolated case of a chicken with internal organ parts missing, there was nothing out of the ordinary. But is this really conclusive? What is it that could have caused these marks? Well, I would be speculating because the truth is, I don't know. It definitely wasn't something that just grabbed it and it was over like that. You can see the marks. What we're seeing here is that there's a lot of trauma, right here. This is normal and from here to the bottom is redness. This looks like trauma, the red. There's a difference between the white and the redness. He put a lot of trauma on the neck. There wasn't only one attack, he took a lot of bites. They're saying that uh, they can tell by looking at the tissue that uh, it, it not just a fight with the animal, it, it, it suck all the blood. They can tell that they suck all the blood out of the animal. This shows trauma in the other skin, and this greenish spot you see is internal trauma. We show that there is internal trauma. Hundreds of honest, hard-working residents from all parts of the island have been eyewitness to a hideous creature lurking around their homes, and those who have lost their livestock by it receive no solid answers from medical or official channels. We need to do a study with lots of research and detail, and that's what I'm going to do. But as far as speculations, I'd rather not say. In fact, little response has been forthcoming from official channels concerning any medical examinations, despite numbers of carcasses being shipped to undisclosed locations, said by reliable sources to be in the United States. Jorge Martin, Puerto Rico's renowned UFO investigator, local paranormal researcher and radio talk show host met with Bob Schott regarding this creature. This creature, according to most of the witnesses, and we're talking about witnesses all over Puerto Rico, uh, reliable witnesses such as policemen, government officers, uh, uh, 
religious people, uh, ministers, uh, according to all these people, the creatures seem to be like a blend, something very strange, very weird, uh, like a blend between a kangaroo and some type of a small dinosaur type creature. Uh, to a certain degree it looks something like reptilian, but it isn't really reptilian. Okay, to give you a, a, an exact idea of how it may look, okay, do you remember uh, the small dinosaur predator creatures seen in Jurassic Park movie? Okay, yes. take off the tail, we're talking about the Velociraptor, take off the tail, take off the head, instead of the reptile's head, place one of the small gray type aliens, big, egg-headed, big, with red eyes, a slanted eyes, small nostrils, a small mouth with some fangs protruding out from it. Uh, it has something like two small arms with three fingers with claws, long claws. Uh, most people have described too that it's a hairy type of creature, mostly grayish in color, dark black in color, dark gray. Um, it has also been described as having like spines or quill like appendages, we don't know what they are that go from the top of their head back down their backs, okay? And the strange thing is that these things, whatever they are, these spines or quills, whatever, they seem to illuminate and change colors in a phosphorescent way. Red, orange, violet, greenish, bluish, uh, alternately, okay? And then they start doing that very fast. And whenever they do this very fast, they actually fly off somehow these appendages, whatever they are, seem to impel these creatures and they fly off in the sky. It's something very weird because even though most of the witnesses have described that these creatures that are beeped, they walk on, on two feet, uh, seem to have like a membrane, under, a skin membrane under their arms that connects with the torso, they don't use this to fly or flapping anyway. They seem to use it just to direct themselves while flying. According to numerous eyewitness accounts, the descriptions are basically the same. A hideous three to five foot creature with bat-like wings and huge red eyes. A cross between a monkey, a reptile, and a bat. Me and my friends were walking and we saw something standing in the tree. So we use a flashlight and uh, we saw him standing there. He looked like a person, big red eyes, big ears. He wanted to attack us. We kept running and he was behind us until we got here. He's like an animal, but he looks like a person too. That's what I saw. Can you describe the type of creatures you have seen? Uh, uh, it has big, uh, oval shaped eyes, uh -huh. and when you keep staring at them, at first they are green, but then they start changing, they become bright red. Son así, así larga. ¿Cuántas tienes? Tres. 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 How can you describe this creature you have seen? Okay, so una criatura de entre. Habían diferentes estaturas, pero yo diría aproximadamente. Several sizes. De tres hasta algunos seis pies de alto. From three foot tall. Okay. Three feet tall up to maybe six feet tall. Una noche estaba trabajando en el sector. We was patrolling at Palmasola sector, Rian Canovanas, and we received a call that the chupacabras, something described as a chupacabras, appeared to, to fishermen who was on the duty of fishing. Una grilla. In what location? In what city exactly were they fishing? The barrio, barrio Palmasola, este. Palmasola is a barrio. The señor Guadalupe, Angel Luis Guadalupe. Mr. Angel Luis Guadalupe. And he was fishing. And you were called out on the. Yeah, the. A usted lo llamaron que fueran allá. Ah, qué correcto. And what happened? Bueno, pasó, pues fuimos allá, entonces él estaba bien asustado y nos relató que mientras encontraba con su compadre pescando, eh, de momento, se encontró que hizo de chupacabras en el top of a tree. Y que al él mirar para arriba, vio ese animal 
trepado. Ah, el chupacabra en was on position to attack. Forma de, de como de atacar. He saw that he run and the chupacabra eh, ran after him, eh, jumping eh, from tree to tree. Un árbol persiguiéndolo. In most of the cases, the animals killed have been found with uh, big peripheral circular holes through which some organs are being excised, let's say the liver, the reproductive organs, the heart in some occasions, or pieces of it, let's say like a biopsy. Okay, but in most of the cases, what we found in the animals are small, I would say half an inch diameter in size, or maybe a fourth of, a, of an inch in size holes, perfect circular holes, that go deep into the animals. And the thing is that when we open the animals during the necropsies, we have made together with uh, veterinarians and specialists here in Puerto Rico, uh, these wounds go very deep into the animals. So we're not talking about common bites of dogs or baboons or monkeys, as the authorities here have tried to explain away these incidents. Because as we know, dog bites, their fangs as much would be maybe an inch and a half. But we're talking about something that goes into the animals up to six and seven inches, okay? inside of, of, of the animals. And in some occasions, strangely, whatever goes into the animals, once inside, seems to change its direction, looking for certain organ specifically. Let's say, for example, the liver, from which it extracts a piece of the liver or the whole organ, we don't know how. Can this be? Because we're talking about very small holes, but the organs have disappeared. Okay, in one case, there was this rabbit. It only had a small hole on the back of the neck, when the animal was open for the necropsy to check it out, it came out that the whole esophagus and muscular tissue in this area and the trachea were missing. How could this be? It had no opening, no cuts, no, no, nothing, whatever. Only this small hole in the back of the, of the neck and there was no connection to the injuries we found in the interior in this sector. How did the trachea disappear, the esophagus and the other organs? So, as, we see, as you can see, we're dealing with something very strange. I understand that one of the policemen here in Puerto Rico shot one of these creatures and you had some of the blood analyzed. We don't know for sure if we're talking about the same creature, but the incident of the policeman happened at about, I would say, October 5, 1995, in Campo Rico sector in Canovanas. Uh, two days later, this young man who lived uh, two streets farther from where the policeman lived, in street number five in Canovanas, uh, so one of these creatures jumping over a cyclone fence, a wire fence, uh, the creature jumped, tumbled over a banana tree, uh, the banana tree fell to the ground, the creature kept running very fast, because they are very fast, incredibly fast, as you see when you talk to the witnesses, uh, and disappeared in the brush there. Uh, the thing is that there was a lot of blood found in the place, over the, the wire fence, in the street, over the banana tree, so police was called to the place, the civil defense was called to the place, the natural resources department was called to the place. Uh, they went there, they investigated what happened, they took some reports, but they wouldn't take samples of this blood that what appeared there. Then? So as they wouldn't do it, that they were the ones who should have done it. So me and my wife Marlene went to the place, uh, we interviewed the witnesses, everything, and took samples from this blood to some friend of ours. They are physicians, they, they have uh, some connections with special labs that have to do with genetic testing and things like that and lab procedures. So they wouldn't come forward because of the sensitive matter related to all of this, okay? But anyway, they were willing to help us out and check this blood. As Jorge was about to explain the results, the tropical rains came down, so we picked it up at Detective Rivera's home in Canovanas. What okay. did the analysis indicate? The analysis indicated uh, at first, preliminarily speaking, uh, that it seemed to be similar to human blood A positive type blood, yes. okay, with an RH factor. The second analysis on this was inconclusive. Right. So they came to no real conclusions on that. Uh, then they found the treatus, uh, E. coli bacteria, uh, vegetation, remnants, parasites. mixed with the blood, parasites, and etc. So that seemed to imply that this blood was coming out from the intestines area of whatever was uh, hurt and was bleeding like this. Uh, also, they found that all the ratios, uh, let's say magnesium, uh, potassium, uh, iron, albumina globulin, all the ratios were totally different to a normal human being, blood, or any animal known on earth because they were very much too high, incredibly high, okay, and that was impossible. So, what this was, they didn't know, but they tell me 
that either there was something totally alien to our environment, and these are doctors, physicians, and they don't get, they, you know, try to be very careful in the language they use, okay, yes, yes. because of their profession, and, and, and they also said that if this was not some type of alien yes. thing, maybe we were dealing here with some type of uh, sophisticated genetic manipulation, and that's it. What do you think it is? At first, I used to think that maybe this was some type of genetic manipulation that was done in Puerto Rico, yes. uh, unknowingly to our people, uh, and some of these creatures escaped to an open environment somehow. Yes. Uh, but now, because of strange details such as the spine line, things that illuminate and seems to impel this creature, allow them to fly, and things like that, and other things, that doesn't seem to fit, okay, uh, with the theory. Uh, but we have found many other cases in which there seems to be a direct UFO alien relation with the phenomena that's going on right on here in Puerto Rico. So far the government is saying nothing. Is the creature as elusive as it is deadly? Or is it the failure to publicly substantiate it, a cover-up to prevent widespread panic and chaos? But if what the people are saying is true, Chupacabra could be the most frightening and chilling phenomena the world has yet known. Perdonando, él quiere que le, que le explique. Que he just said that uh, one Tuesday night in November, he was taking this uh, friend of his, a member of his church, to his home, and as they were driving in a small van vehicle in the uh, uh, Cambalache sector, uh, Carlitos, the young man who was with him, uh, said, hey, look what's there. When they looked out the window of the car, there was this odd-looking creature at the edge of the road, okay? Uh, it was looking at them. Uh, the other passenger, Carlitos, was very afraid about this creature. At first, he wouldn't believe it. Maybe he said it was some type of a dummy or something that someone has planted there, but then he saw the creature was moving and looking at them. So he came out from the car, and he wanted to approach the creature. But when he got about four feet from it, uh, he saw this creature, something came out from the mouth of it, something pointy, very fast, in a couple of occasions. So he saw this as a sign of a, a maybe if he approached him more, he would be attacked or something. So he came back to the car, closed the door, and the creature just remained there looking at them. And all of a sudden, it he saw these things come out from the head, from the back of the head, down the spine. Something like some spines or something that were uh, lu luminous, changing colors. Estaban moviéndose. Si, la tenía abajo, o sea, como acostada. They were laying down. Wow, entonces de momento la levantó. And suddenly, they stood up. Y a, a levantarla, that's when, a moverla así. Y that's when they started color. vibrating and crossing in front of each other and changing colors and buzzing. Bueno, eh, esto se... That's when it flew off. Another weird detail is that in many occasions uh, we have given have been given accounts by people, reliable witnesses all over Puerto Rico, that they have observed this creature when something comes out from their mouth, something pointy, something long, yeah. very fast. We have the suspicion that this specific detail might explain away the holes that appear in many of the animals. Maybe this is what is actually going into the animals, intruding into the animals, and absorbing liquids or tissues or whatever. Do you feel that it's UFO related in any way? Well, we have many cases now that seem to imply just that. At first, I used to believe that maybe this it was related uh, to some type of genetic manipulation experimentation being done in Puerto Rico, unknowingly and that some creature escape or whatever. But now, after getting more data and correlating this data in different parts of Puerto Rico, uh, we have come to the knowledge that in many places where this creature have been observed, in areas where there were killings happening, uh, together with these creatures, people have witnessed apparent alien beings, okay, together with UFOs, flying saucer type crafts, and pyramid shaped crafts. So, it is happening more and more. And when the correlation keeps coming on, there's something to it. These people don't know each other. They're very serious people from different parts of the island of Puerto Rico. 
and the information they are given is similar in every detail. You were talking about Arecibo connection, yes. a lot of the UFO activity around there and Chupacabras. Yes, right? even though that is hardly mentioned in the media or by the, by the people from SETI themselves, etc., there have been a lot of, of sightings, UFO sightings in, in the area surrounding the Arecibo Ray Observatory. And there have also been some cases of uh, Chupacabra type uh, incidents and encounters there. Ask you what he thinks it is. ¿Qué tú crees que es esto? Bueno, lo que yo vi realmente yo entiendo que no es una cosa de, de nuestra vivencia, de nuestro mundo. Que es algo sobrenatural. What I saw is something not from this world. Eddie Dees, paranormal investigator and reporter for El Vocero newspaper in San Juan has been actively and single-handedly investigating this, this creature. Uh, this creature lift up, uh, and one of my photos I had show you, lift up a big cycle fence, heavy fence. Was that the 20-foot fence that you were talking about? Right. Here, this fence right here, and it was heavy. That is a, uh, a three-inch tube. And that tube, it took four people to pick it up again and to relocate it. That thing yanked it out. What it, what it was, we don't know. But whoever did that, it at least took about five or six people to do it, to just yank it out out of concrete. This thing was just ripped out. Something with the strength to rip out steel fences from that concrete foundation and the vampire-like savagery to suck the blood and organs from its victims, no matter what size, roams the island. We shave the neck to see the incisions, but in different parts there's a lot of perforations, in the right side and left side again. The other rabbit found on the same side had also the same type of wounds. What kind of animal can make these kind of wounds? That's a good question. To my opinion, I do not know of any kind of animal that can make that kind of penetrations that deep. This bizarre creature dominates any animal it encounters. It appears from out of nowhere, takes its prey, and vanishes. Despite the best efforts of journalists, political figures, and researchers, no one has gone public with the capture of this elusive and terrifying predator. Here we are trying to figure out prints. We have various groups helping out with the search. We have the state police and some volunteers that want to help out and find the killer. In a serious attempt to try to track down this creature, Bob Shock gets Mayor Soto's support and the cooperation of local authorities. At Melvin Reyes Ranch in the village of Canovanus, the site of most of the killings and one of the more gruesome attacks, a farmer's sheep reportedly had its tail torn from the roots by this creature. Give me a little bit of the background on this place again. Okay. Uh, on this place, the Chupacabra appears about three times. And one of the time, attack goats. And one of the goats survived, uh, thanks to the medical uh, uh, knowledge of the owner of the farm. Uh, but people around here are, saw the Chupacabras uh, twice, twice. And they believe that uh, the Chupacabra is around around this place and uh, with uh, the, the equipment, uh, uh, good vibe, maybe we can catch the chupacabra here. But what about the goat that's, that, that was attacked, that's half dead? Well, they take care of the goat, uh, the goat uh, have uh, the remarks to be attacked by the chupacabras. They attacked the, the sheep and they killed one. Two of them were bite and uh, it pulled out the, the tail. 
and they killed one of them. Well, and the night anterior, the perros estaban, the perros estaban ladrando lo que nunca. Okay, the night before that, that happened, the dogs was acting very strange. They was sí. howling. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo estamos? Bien. Reyes. ¿Cómo estamos? Boxshop, Global Media Production, eh, Melvin Reyes. His animal was attacked by the chupacabras. Y... ¿Me atacó los animales? He said that uh, an animal, a unknown animal, uh, appeared and attacked his animals. Ask him if he's heard of this happening with other farmers. Eh, que tú tengas conocimiento, está pasando con, en, en otras fincas aquí cerca. Sí, en el área pasado. The area is in this area? Yes, in this area. Yeah. How close to the house does he keep his animals? ¿Cuán lejos de la, de la casa tú, tú mantienes esos animales? Aquí como algunos 30 pies. About 30 feet away. So this attack happened 30 feet away from his house approximately? Yes. Yes. How far back does his property go up, up to the hill? Después de la colina, ¿cuán, cuán lejos llega tu, tu propiedad? Mm, se extiende bastante. No sé si está cuerda por ahí para arriba. It's 60 acres. That's it. What, now, what is beyond that? Isn't there another mountainous range back there? ¿Qué hay detrás de esa colina? ¿Hay otra montaña o qué es lo que queda detrás? Bueno, sí, hay más montaña por ahí para arriba. There is mountain. Is that not jun Junco area back there? El Junque queda detrás sí, de eso. Eh, yes. Okay, let's go take a look at that goat, and then what I'd like to do is go set the motion detectors up in that hill and take the electromagnetic field meter, and then let's go on up there and uh, check it out. Está bien por ti? Sí. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Bien. What I'm showing you here is the, uh, this is the raised uh, sheep that was uh, supposedly attacked by Chupacabra uh, not too long ago. And what it did was it yanked his tail out. And I think uh, you're aware, weren't you up there? Yes, You've I was. You've seen that. W when did you see this? Uh, uh, I saw sheep? it the same. Uh, I How saw soon it after it happened? A couple hours after. It actually grabbed it right almost to his spine and, and pulled it. Just grabbed it and yanked it out. There was one dead, it had the, had the same wounds that I've been investigating on Chupacabra. I'm strong, but I'm not going to be able to pull a right, sheep's right. tail off. It would be like taking your arm yeah. and trying to pull it out of its socket. Right. So something either very fast pulled it, that was very, very strong, or it was bitten off. You see, this hair it just is a new, brand new hair because it was pulled. All this area was pulled out. So this has been like two <laughs> months already. Se le quedó en carne viva. Todo esto ahí, yeah. carne viva, todo esto, todo esto. This was some flesh. All this area was some flesh. La que, la this que is, murió. ask him how old this was. ¿Cuánto tiempo atrás fue esto? Dos meses y medio, tres meses. Two months and a sí. half or three months ago. Eh, la otra que murió, murió en esa misma circunstancia, pero eh, se sangró, que se sangró completa. Sí. La there, misma. There was another one dead, that, that it was the same thing, but he lost so much blood that he got killed. The chupacabra pulled out all the tail and, and the hair and everything because it was on flesh. Did he find the tail? ¿Usted encontró la, eh, el rabo? No. No, he didn't find the tail. No. Ask him to, to, if they can bring another sheep over here uh, so we can make a comparison. Just tore it off, right? Se lo arrancó. Se lo arrancó todo esto aquí, se lo arrancó. Ask him if he's afraid that it'll attack his family next. Eh, si tú crees, si tú tienes miedo de que primero pudieran ser los animales y que los próximos pudieran ser tu familia, que pudiera atacar familiares. Todo es posible. Everything is possible. That's why he carries the big machete, huh? These people live on this island and and they're out on these cases a lot. Ask them if what they think this is that happened here. Es que ustedes que viven en esta área, ¿qué ustedes creen que pasó, qué pasó aquí? Con esa, con, con esa cabra, con esos animales. Por lo menos lo que yo pude observar oh, con ese verdad. animal, tuvo que haber sido algo que, algo extraño, porque la verdad que yo he visto mordidas de animales, he visto mordeduras de, de diferentes tipos de, de cosas, pero ninguna como esa. Eso, eso, bites o de animales, 
uh, before, but nothing like this. Ask him what he thinks it is. What do you think? Uh, ¿Qué tú crees que puede ser? Pudo haber sido para mí algo no de este planeta. Para mí. I think it's, some, uh, it's something not on this planet. <laughs> Where's the most likely spot that we can uh, set up up here? El cuál es el sitio más perfecto, Aguayo, donde se puede hacer tirar eso por aquí. Señalale uno. Yo creo que acá arriba, en el otro lado, más arriba. Okay. It's a natural cave, Bob. Uh, that cave uh, between the rocks with the vegetation on the top was used uh, so many years ago before Christopher Columbus by the Indians. They hide here from the Spanish after Christopher Columbus and um, before that they hide from the elements of nature. Uh, How far back does this go? It's about 20 feet. They think that the chupacabras can hide here. Well, you can find the, in these caves you can find uh, spiders and you can find snakes. I'll put a motion detector in there and I'll set this. Okay. I'm going to set this up so it'll it'll catch anything coming in or going out of. And then, I'm just going to uh, test this to see if it's a. Uh, I just want to make sure it's working. All right. Great. All right. Okay, let's leave that then. Where are we at around here now, Leo, as opposed to uh, where the house is? We, we, are, we are in the middle of the farm. This is the middle of the farm? Yes. Okay, yes, what I'm, yes, what yes, I'm yes, going yes, to do yes. is I'm going to set the uh, EM, the natural electronic field meter, up right about here. We've got one motion detector down there at the base of the cave. And what this will do, this will register any electromagnetic changes in the el, Earth's field around this area. El va a colocar un detector electromagnético, guayo. What will happen is if, if uh, any changes in the Earth's electromagnetic field occur within this general vicinity, it will trigger that meter. Okay. He told me that the Chupacabra was around here. Uh, the Chupacabra will use the cave. You have a detector in the cave. Or we go that way through the... Through the to the, to the animals beside the house. Why don't we not, not in, the, in the in the way of the fence because no, no. the chupacabras can see the animals from this area. Okay, let's head that way then. Okay. Tell him that what I want to do is put this at the best possible place that would be close to the animals, but I don't want the animals setting this off. I'm going to set this. I want to test it. It needs a few seconds to set itself. This is a dual frequency motion detector. So I'm going to set this up here. All right. I'm going to I'm going ahead and take this down and put it close to the animals. And who's coming with me, Leo? Sergeant. Mr. Mr. Grail. Okay. We're going to put this about 50 meters away from where the animals are eating. Now we've got one, we have one in the cave. We've got the electromagnetic field meter there, which you people should be about another 30 feet away from that. Okay. Okay. But what I think I'll do is before I go, I'm going to put another motion detector up here about 100 feet. Facing up the hill. All right, let's do that now, and then when I come back, so that way you'll have that cave covered, you'll have this way coming covered from coming down the hill, and if there's any electromagnetic energy in this general vicinity here, that meter will pick it up, and then we'll put this down at the bottom near the animals. Although one of the motion detectors went off, as Bob said it near the animals at the bottom of the hill, this was not caught on tape. The first two alarms that went off that you people heard up there were me. The first one was resetting it, and the second adjusting it for a different angle. We walked away from it. We were about 250 feet away from it. 
The other animals were on this side, about 20 feet away from the outside of the gate where I originally set that alarm. The third alarm that you hear, heard go off up here, something set it off. Around 1 a.m., dogs started barking all over the valley below for about one quarter of a mile. Well, here all that, there's something that's got them going that whole mountain range. The dog is like, like crazy. Yeah, something's something got them upset, unusual. doesn't it? Something else. It's something unusual. They they don't they are not backing all the time. They rest at this time and they are resting. It's something bothering me. Bother the, the dog. Once again the chupacabra evaded detection and capture. However, with attacks becoming bolder and bolder, is the creature expanding its prey? Could humans be next? She's moving because uh, she can't sleep anymore. Ever since this thing started happening here, she hears sounds, footsteps around her house. Han tratado de, de tocarme On one occasion, la mano. they tried to grab her by the window, you know, through the window. ¿Qué so tipo de criatura? What type of creature was como it? El grande. De el que, es que como que yo, el, el chupacabra, el chupacabra. Yes, yeah, el chupacabra type creature tried to grab her I'm very concerned right now. At this time, he's attacking sheep, animals, goats, horses, cows. But maybe tomorrow he goes for humans. When we go in the bottom of, of my house, I yes. saw that, that creature, like this tall, with the red eyes, like uh, water drops, but bigger, you know? There was sucking one of my chicken and in the ground there was two more ready dead dead yeah when that creature told me i was really scared in the tiny village of dorado where some of these witnesses reside a group of hideous creatures was sighted heading toward a strange hovering light in a wooded area behind their home Okay. At first they didn't see anything. Then they started doing voices and sounds, okay? And then they saw about five different flying saucers in the area, UFOs. And after that they started seeing these creatures. I'm afraid for my family right now. Because I, I don't know I don't know exactly what happened. There was a veterinarian who came here, okay? He was working with the so-called tax force from the agriculture department here in Puerto Rico. In their lab they have here in Dorado. Remember the public relations program I told you about? Yes. Okay, yes. he came here, they wanted him to take some of the chickens. He wouldn't do it. And that's the normal attitude. What do you think it is? I think it's something really... I think it's something out, out of, the, of this world. A photo taken with special night vision equipment reveals strange lights in back of the residence. Homes. These are the lights that Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Rodriguez was always describing that they were watching, you know, they, they saw this flying saucer f just stopped right there and just stood in the air for about 20 minutes. This is where they've been spotted a lot, right? Yes. In this area, yeah, or are they this area. going yeah, into and coming out of? Yes, that's correct. I had Miguel draw this out to me, and this was the drawing that he drew, he drew to me the, uh, this is the that mountain. These are the two lights that I showed you on yes, that. Yes. And here is his house. This is the small river that he has over here. It runs him back. And since he was the one that did this drawing, uh, he even signed it. And I, he was showing that there was a, like a laser light, and it was so yellowish, and it had a lot of smoky type. Right. And right there, he had counted at least fifteen creatures known as Chupacabra. Strange hidden areas where the UFOs and creatures were sighted reveal where something large had been resting. Okay, see how that's all different? Now look at here. Look down in here, see how they're bent to the left? As if something come up through here or down through there, see that? Way down in through here, can't see way down here? And it turns around and it goes down there. This brush doesn't look like it's it's broken, uh, Jorge. It looks like it's bent down in here. 
right there was was something watching us. What did you say? I don't know. Like, that was like a red light, like this size. How close? It's not. It's not. It's not very really close. Let's go. Something's been through here. Look, there's a path right there. Look at this. Mm -hmm. For Dorado, the search revealed that something large had been present in the exact area of the sightings, as evidenced by the impressions in the deep, grassy field. But what may be the most chilling account of all comes from El Junque. Around February of this 1996, down in Luquillo, there was a man and a woman that were driving their vehicle through some part of the Junque. And their car just stalled for a second. The engine just went in, just went in blank. They got off the car, started checking around, opened up the hood. All of a sudden, this lady was attacked by saw, saw some kind of uh, animal or creature. She's, she said that it was a, an animal. And the creature attacked her just around next to, right around her neck here. Yes. And her husband, they started to, to uh, move around and force, had a, they were fighting against something that he didn't know what was he was fighting, but it was dark. He got this thing, off the creature or whatever it was, off of her. It was heavy and just disappeared all of a sudden. They got to, to the nearest hospital that's in Luquillo and filed a report to the, uh, to the police department and the uh, hospital. And there was a... They, we, I couldn't get the report because uh, we tried to find out for information and details and that, and everything was so secret and it just disappeared all the information. The Junkie Rainforest area, located on the northeast end of the island, beautiful but mysterious, with its thick vegetation, is a perfect cover for any creature. An area of many UFO sightings El Junque is also a suspected location of strange, top secret activities by the military. There is something, something very strange going in there. I will wait. Now he moves very, very, very fast. Because one day it's here in Ceiba, one day it is in, in Calle, one day it is in Arecibo, one day it is in, in many other places. You know. What do you two guys think it is? Well, I don't think uh, it really, really comes through to something to, to worry because many animals is being killed. No, no, nobody knows yet who, what is what. Although official channels remain silent, a tip from the security guards leads the trail to Aqua Buenos, an out-of-the-way village in the center of the island where a bizarre creature was sighted lurking near a mysterious cave where dead animals were found. They say that there's something strange with that cave. But I, I, I didn't went to the cave. We were planning to go, we didn't went. I guess you should go to that cave. Maybe you'll find something. Like a month ago, a lady told that she saw uh, something weird, something big, hit the window of her house and disappeared. She was like hysterical. She didn't saw, see something like that never before. And that was, we went, we saw the window scratch. She started screaming and, and the little kid saw him too, but he can see the eyes. He said it was, was like that. What did they do, just take off? They start screaming in the house. They call us. We went there and we found two chickens. The Agua Buena Cave, it's very dangerous. You have to keep in track where you're going to because you never know when you can fall into a booby trap. This is the road to the, to the cave. It's not a cave, it's a cavern. There's a lot of cave inside. As Adventures Beyond soon finds out, this is no ordinary cave. Now we, we have to walk 
walk right yeah. right up through there. Right. Okay. Look at that first gate here. Okay. Look at the entrance is. All right, that's where the entrance is. Right. And Freddie, tell Bob what the mayor said when we were leaving. Well, the mayor just stopped by in the light here. In the light. He says that uh, we'll do, we'll definitely find something here. Because people have told him, and they're afraid to talk, to talk about this, so that they have seen wild things come out of the, 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 the woods and come in into the, into the woods. So we might be prepared about it. Well, we're here at the cave in, the cave in Aqua Buenos, and uh, Ulysses is the director of the defense. You're saying no one else has been up here to cover this yet, then? Yes, sir. All right. How long will it take us to get up there? It's about 20 to 15 minutes, right? All right. All right, let's go. If there's an ideal home on the island for this creature, this is it. System. The very, that's a small, a small one. We have like maybe five, six inches big ones. What are the kind of animals have you seen in here? Only bad. Now this doesn't go only like here. It has to go way down here, right? That goes down through a hole through this. So something moved us. What's down here? Where does this cave go, Drew? Okay, that's one of, the, one of the entrance, the big one. Maybe whatever, Chupacabra, he can come to it. This is a, um, the good one, one of the good ones. Mike, tell us what you found. Well, I found this whole thing. Uh, I've never seen I came here before and I've never seen this whole thing. And you know, this, this thing is fresh. Look at it, this is just me. This is loose, loose dirt. I mean, who's going to make a hole all the way down there? You, you try to reach well, look down for some, Yeah, well, you, you, can't, you can't get your head in there. Right. This just happened. As you can see, there's nobody in this cave where we would have heard him. Right. I've got a motion detector set up at the head of that entrance. We would have heard that going off by now. Something is in here, but you see, the problem is you can't... What's this? I have found different different kinds of uh, activity in these caves of stuff that have been very strange on sort of like a slimy uh, stuff, uh, jelly type. That's what the chupacabra, uh, the creature, leaves behind on, on their victims. They have found some kind of uh, jelly type of uh, lava on top of them. So what we're finding here are strange holes that these people aren't accustomed to seeing. It's something very strange that is he digs out something out of the out of the uh, dirt, stuff like that. But what's he digging for? I don't know. What is he another hole? Freshly dug holes, moving vines. Something staring at them from the depths of the caverns. He has to be there. Something is there. Although numerous reports regarding similar sightings and attacks are currently coming in from all parts of the world, the main core of activity still seems to be Puerto Rico. Is this a hideous secret genetic experiment on the loose? Or a bizarre intruder from somewhere in deep space that prowls the woods and villages in search of its next victim? What it is, what could it be, it's not from this planet. <laughs>